Hey guys, welcome back, and today we're going to be delving into the realm of the Xbox Series X and doing a buying guide. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you what to expect when you're buying the latest Xbox console. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Now the things I will be covering in this video is what you will get in the box, the console and controller, accessories, storage, and last but not least, the games. The Xbox Series X is Xbox's fourth generation console capable of playing games in 4K resolution and frame rates of up to 120 frames per second. It was released worldwide on November 10, 2020 and is the successor to the Xbox One. The Series X was released alongside the old digital Xbox Series S and as of this video, the Xbox Series X costs 749 Australian dollars, which is the equivalent to 499 US dollars. So, what do you get when you buy the Xbox Series X? Well, you get the console itself, one wireless controller, two AA batteries, a power cord, and last but not least, a HDMI cable. The Xbox Series X is very minimalistic and clean in design. The first thing you will probably notice is this big green vent on the top, which allows for plenty of airflow. On the front, we have a power slash reset button shaped as the Xbox logo. Then this small black eject button. Below that is the disc tray. And we also have one USB port on the front. And above that is the sync button to sync up controllers and other accessories. And on the back, we have two more USB ports, an ethernet port if you wanna to connect to the internet via an ethernet cable, a power port, HDMI port, and finally, the Seagate expansion storage port. And as you can see, we've got even more vents. The Series X controller is pretty similar to the Xbox One's controller with a few minor changes and improvements. Some changes is this new button above the analog sticks, which is used for sharing in-game photos or recordings. Press it once to take a photo and hold it down to record a gameplay video. Another difference is the D-pad, which is now this concave disc similar to what the Elite controller had. However, I did find that this D-pad was a little bit too clicky for my liking. The controller also has these little dots on the controller, which acts as a grip for the controller. Now, at first, I actually wasn't a fan of this as it was actually hurting my hands as it was rubbing on the controller. But after a while, I actually just got used to it. The controller has this matte texture finish, which looks and feels nice, and the controller has some weight behind it, which makes it feel like a really good quality product. There are a bunch of first and third party accessories that don't come with the Xbox Series X, such as the Seagate one terabyte external storage card, which is useful for expanding your storage, since a lot of the current gen games are massive in size, even reaching the 100 gigabyte range. However, this thing is expensive, putting you back almost 429 Australian dollars. If you don't want to keep replacing batteries, you can also buy a rechargeable battery that comes with a 2.7 meter USB-C cable. You can also connect third-party headsets to your console via the controller, which is awesome because it doesn't lock you into buying first-party headsets. There are a ton of other accessories for the Xbox Series X, such as charging stands, controller add-ons, and so much more. The Xbox Series X out of the box comes with a total of 1TB of storage. However, you will only have access to 802GB of storage after system files and the operating system. You can however use third-party external storage such as hard drives and solid state drives. However, games optimized for Series X can only be stored on third-party external storage devices, not played. So, if you want to play games off an external storage device, you will need to fork out the extra money for the 1TB Seagate expansion storage storage card. The Xbox Series X is backwards compatible with select titles from the Xbox One, the Xbox 360 and the original Xbox. You can find a list of all backwards compatible games on Microsoft's website and the list is pretty huge. Most of these games get upgraded FPS boosts, 4K resolution updates and auto HDR implementation. Some of these games like Fallout 3 run at 60 FPS with 4K resolution and they look absolutely fantastic which could honestly pass as current gen games. However, not every game gets these upgrades and sadly Microsoft has ended support adding more backwards compatible titles. So unfortunately, it is now up to the developers of these games to implement these features. Some games that do get these upgrades are Morrowind, Oblivion, New Vegas, No Man's Sky, Fear, and so much more. However, some games don't get these features and some of those games are Fable 2, Left 4 Dead 2, and Red Dead Redemption 2, just to name a few. 
And the best thing about Xbox is Game Pass. Game Pass is essentially Netflix but for video games with over hundreds of titles, even brand new titles releasing day one. Anyway guys, that's my Xbox Series X buying guide. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If it helped you out, please remember to leave a like as it really helps me out. So anyway guys, do you plan on buying an Xbox Series X or do you already own one? Let me know in the comments below as I'd love to hear what you guys think about this console. Me personally, I absolutely love this console. Only gripe would be is the lack of exclusive titles on it. So anyway guys, that's it for the video. And with that guys, I'll catch you next time.